evening to you and thank you for joining us on Y254 Updates. My name is Patricia Murioki and tonight we talk about a very interesting topic and tonight we're talking about women political participation. We just try to see what are the barriers that probably are hindering Kenyan women to fully participate in the political arena. We try to look at how can we overcome these barriers. We have the two that gender rule that has not been implemented for the past nine years we saw the CJ advise the president to dissolve parliament because of lack of implementation of that bill and to help us talk about this topic tonight I would not have thought of any other people than two young women leaders doing amazing things in their community. We have Anita Mbae, who is a youth leader. She's also the program coordinator, Young Women Leaders Connect, and she has served as a student leader that is in Daystar University. And then we have Wendy Aura, who is a young leader herself, doing really amazing been uh, empowering the girl child in this uh, country. She's a direct, she's the executive director, Young Women Leaders Connect. And talk to us across our social media platforms. That is at Y254 channel. You can also reach me at Patricia Murioki. Feel free to reach out and tell us what do you think can be done to make sure that our women, our young women, and also women who have been there, what changes can they make to make sure that our women who are coming up have opportunities are able to be aware of every chance that he's in the political arena. Welcome to the discussion. Hi, hello ladies. Hi, how are you? I can say I'm very happy to have you again. I've had each one of you, but on a very different, um, on a different topic, but I'm happy to have you to today. And my first question, or rather even before we get to the discussion, I'd like to look at uh, different uh, stat uh, statistics. We have South Africa that has 44%, that is the number of the percentage of women participation in the parliament. We have Rwanda that stands at 61%. And then we have, as of 2013, Kenya was at 19.48%. Uh, 19 but there has been an increase that is uh, looking at 20, the, the 2013 election to the 2017 election, uh, there has been an 18% increase in terms of women participation. What are your thoughts? Let me start with you, Anita. What are your thoughts on women leadership in Kenya? And as much as today we are focusing on politics, probably you can give that um, opinion cutting across all sectors. That is also corporate. We can look also at business. What is your thoughts on women leadership in this country? First of all, Patricia, let me really thank you for having me on the show. You're it's welcome. always a pleasure to be here You're welcome. and to discuss about um, you know, various topics. Mm -hmm. uh, so first of all, when we talk about women political participation, this is a, this is a very uh, close topic that is close to my heart because mm -hmm. I really love the empowerment of women mm -hmm. and I love seeing women succeed. Mm -hmm. And uh, let me start by saying that uh, when you talk about women political participation, mm -hmm. um, this is a matter of inclusive growth, this is a matter of human rights, and this is also a matter of um, sustainable development. Because when you talk about sustainable development, how do we um, you know, develop um, as communities? How do you do, do develop as governments? Uh, women have to be at the center of it. Mm. And wh once you include um, women in governance and uh, in politics, there are better policies, honestly, Patricia. Okay. Because women think domestic, women think children, women think um, of how best they can reach societies. Mm -hmm. So it's definitely um, a good thing that women are included in political participation. Mm -hmm. But, um, well, we've had gains mm -hmm. and we, we've got... Um, of course, things that we can do better, mm -hmm. but I believe we are going to be delving into that. Okay. Uh, Wendy, what is your thoughts yeah. as a young upcoming leader, someone uh, I'm very sure like um, I followed you and I've seen your passion for leadership and I know one day I'm going to see you serve this country in a certain position, whether elected or appointed. What are your thoughts on leadership, that is women leadership in this country? Okay, first of all, uh, thanks so much for the opportunity You're to welcome. be part of this amazing uh, discussion. Mm -hmm. And I want to say that if you look at the trend, the historical trend since independence, mm -hmm. I think there's a progressive growth in politics and also in corporate. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, between, uh, at independence, there was 
totally no one mm -hmm. in the parliament. And between 1963 to uh, 2012, uh, we've had 50 women mm -hmm. uh, member of parliament. Mm -hmm. So that is progressive. Mm -hmm. And you've also talked in your uh, statistics that between 2013 and 2017, mm -hmm. there was an 18% increase. Mm -hmm. So that is something that is applaudable. However, mm -hmm. I think there is still much to be done. Mm -hmm. uh, it's to, uh, we are still a country, we are a democratic country, we've gained a lot through women leadership, mm -hmm. yet we still la uh, lag behind if you compare us with other East African countries. Okay. If you look at Rwanda, they're 61%. Yeah. Now, if you ask yourself what is really hindering as from even getting the 50%. I think we are on our way there, mm -hmm. though there are major setbacks that we need to deal with. Mm -hmm. And when you come to corporate, uh, there is much more improvements. So we've had many, uh, many women coming out as CEOs, directors, mm -hmm. board members, and that was not there before. Mm -hmm. So I think we are starting to embrace that women can actually lead, mm -hmm. and that is a good thing. So from there, after embracing that, then we still need to create more opportunities and look at the loopholes that we have. Okay. Uh, yeah. Now having talked uh, or having had your views on what, how the country is doing currently as far as women leadership is concerned, tonight our aim is to really be able to highlight some of the most uh, obstacles. What is this that is making women leaders in this country not participate fully in politics? So let's have a look. I'll have each one of you probably address two major points, that is two major obstacles, based on you, what really you think about that. And I would like to start with you, Anita. What do you think are some of the most uh, obstacles that really hinder the participation of women in politics in this country? Well, for me, um, I'll go to a very major one that I see really recurring and mm -hmm. really um, preventing women from participating to full potential. Mm -hmm. And that would be the um, institutional factors mm -hmm. or the party, po party politics, mm -hmm. whereby when you look at the parties in Kenya, they, they operate through very rigid systems mm -hmm. that uh, do not really put account um, you know, women's needs mm -hmm. or uh, domestic, domestic responsibilities. Mm -hmm. And um, I feel that in Kenya, parties should be, um, of course, be leading uh, tools into driving uh, women political participation. Mm -hmm. And they can do this easily by, first of all, including more uh, women candidates uh, in their candidates list. Mm -hmm. um, they could also do that um, through, of course, um, creating more awareness and, and embracing the fact that the more women that they have, um, the better it becomes for a balanced opinion. Mm -hmm. Well, um, it's also very easy to say that, but then again, um, the, the thing that I feel that could be done to really sort out this issue would be um, the government stepping in and probably providing more funding mm -hmm. for uh, the political parties that uh, of course, um, put more women candidates on their on their list, mm -hmm. and this acts as uh, an incentive or mm -hmm. a driver mm -hmm. for um, making sure that there are more women uh, on on their list. Mm -hmm. But then again, um, we've also um, I, I mentioned earlier that these parties also operate through a very rigid system mm -hmm. because they probably fear you know losing power or maybe the supporter you know base and eventually losing political power. But I think we should eventually come to realize that um, women are not a threat. Mm -hmm. um, the more women you have, um, again, the better the balanced opinion there is. Mm -hmm. And of course, um, I mean, the better, uh, the better we, are, we are represented as a, as a, as a, as a society. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I like Hanita has mentioned that um, women are not to be feared or women can also do something yeah, but we would, I would like us to also talk about most of the times people have uh, termed women as emotional which means that because a, a woman is, an, is termed as an emotional being they may not be able to lead us so very well but before we get to that point I would like to hear Wendy's um, views yeah. on what do you think are some of the most ob obstacles that really hinder the women to fully participate in politics in this country? Um, for me, I think the, the major hindrance is we're still in a very patriarchal society. Mm -hmm. I'll, and I would agree to that. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, we are still rooted to so much stereotyping that women have to go through a lot of 
uh, having to prove yourselves mm -hmm. uh, to the society. Mm -hmm. For instance, as a young woman, if I would want to lead, uh, to maybe talk about my aspirations, mm -hmm. first of all, they'll be talking about my marital status. Yes. They'll be asking, where are you married? Mm -hmm. How many kids do you have? Mm -hmm. uh, why won't you buy at your husband's place and, and not your home? Mm -hmm. So you, that, that makes you wonder, if my, how is my marriage going to provide the leadership? Mm -hmm. If I want to buy, to, to be an aspirant, mm -hmm. I'm coming on board because I believe I'm a leader and there's something I need to change in the mm -hmm. society. Mm -hmm. But people won't take that. They, they won't look at that in that perspective because mm -hmm. uh, we've grown in a society where we believe that uh, we are still limited to uh, being the good wife, being the, uh, the, the housewife, yeah, the good mother. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I think mostly if you go at the grassroots, mm -hmm where th a lot of people are still not exposed mm -hmm. to women doing a lot of stuff in the society. Mm -hmm. They still believe that the rightful place for a woman is to be led. Mm -hmm. the, the man is to be the leader. Mm -hmm. And when you come on board as a, a woman, they try to pull down strings uh, one at a time, mm -hmm. trying to pull you down. And that is one thing that is really going to, uh, to affect us. Because as much as you're even fighting for opportunities in the two-third gender rule, mm -hmm. you ask yourself, suppose it happens, mm -hmm. is the society still ready to change their mindset? Mm -hmm. Because if you still go back to election and bring women aspirants, which has been there? Mm -hmm. We don't. We can't say that women have not vying. Mm -hmm. We are. have many women who are really running for office. Mm -hmm. The issue is the, the society still has not embraced them okay. to be able to trust them with leadership roles. Mm -hmm. And that is one thing we really have to grapple with our society. Okay. And just to highlight something about, you are talking about uh, women being believed to be emotional. Let us take a very short break. Okay. And then when we come back, we could uh, now dive into the women being tabbed as emotional. We take a very short break on Y254, but don't go too far away. We're going to be right back with more. Thank you for staying with us on Y254 Updates. Welcome back to our discussion. And if you're just joining us tonight, we're talking about women political participation. We're just trying to see what are the barriers, how can we overcome them, and also probably how do we now bring in the society to probably... Uh, change their mindset and change the perceptions that people have as far as women leadership is concerned. Talk to us across our social media platforms. That is at Y254 channel. You can also reach me at Patricia Murioki. Before we went for the break, I cut you short uh, and I'd say that uh, most of the times women are referred to as emotional beings. And people feel like because they are emotional, then they'll not be able to make uh, uh, better decisions. That is, if they're tasked with the responsibility of leading a country of, or leading people. But I'd like to mention, we have New Zealand, we have Germany, we have Taiwan, among other uh, countries that are led by women. And I would like to take a very good example from the New Zealand president. This lady has done a lot, have, uh, like honestly amazing work. And we also saw New Zealand do very well with COVID-19. She was able to control everything, being the leader of that country. So having this history, and uh, we have a record of evidence where we can draw our arguments from. Wendy, do you really think that this is even a statement people should utter as a way to make women not go for the seats, go for the political positions? Yeah, I, I think as I mentioned before, uh, that is just an example of what the society wants to, to clinch on women's mm -hmm. mind, mm -hmm. that we are emotional. Mm -hmm. But first of all, we need to embrace that before we are leaders, we are human beings. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If I'm emotional, and personally, I'm very emotional, mm -hmm. but at no point mm -hmm. will you see me making any decision based on emotions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we may become emotional as human beings, mm -hmm. and that is okay. It is fine to cry, it's, oh, yeah, it's fine to laugh when necessary. Yeah. It's fine to let our emotions, mm -hmm. because it's also part of mental health development. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so when we start trusting them, uh, on, our, on women's face as to make it look bad, mm -hmm. then now that is the problem mm -hmm. that the society is bringing. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, talking of that, there's a day uh, Honorable Sabina went emotional. Yeah. yeah. And there was a lot of backlash. Backlash, yeah. yeah. yeah a lot of talks. And you, ca you just wonder, um, now, because she's a women rep, how was that particular situation going to affect a decision as a woman? How many times, let me cut you off, how many yeah. times have we seen uh, mm. the, the former president of the United States of America, Barack yeah. Obama, give yeah. speeches and cry? And you and can imagine, celebrated. You can imagine here. it wasn't an issue. Mm -hmm. Actually, when President Obama uh, cried, it wasn't a challenge. Yeah, it's we celebrated. were celebrating. Yeah. It's actually translated yeah. 
Yeah, so that, that's why we are trying to, you see how the society will, will look at two things. They want, they want us to, uh, they believe that, they want us to create an, a certain strength mm -hmm. emotionally that may not be there at a particular situation mm -hmm. and judge us based on that. And also, let's not forget that that is a way of grouping, generalizing, which is not okay. okay. Not mm -hmm. all women are emotional. And yeah, not true. all will are not able to handle their emotions. Mm -hmm. So that's just a generalization. And we take it differently depending on uh, who is getting emotional. Mm -hmm. Some will be celebrating. And if it be, because it's a woman, it will be told women are mm -hmm. emotional. So I think <laughs> it's just as a, a society, uh, the stereotypes, the, how do I call it? I don't want to give it a very funny <laughs> name. <but laughs> Yeah, that, that's just <laughs> one example of what I'm talking about. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. Before, I would yeah. like us probably, as, you, as we come to the end of the discussion, I would like mm -hmm. us to talk about like culture and culture and traditions. Yeah. But before we get to that, Anita, let me bring you in on what now do you think? We've talked about some of the barriers that could be hindering women. Mm -hmm. What, how do you think we can overcome that? And I want you to give a comment to that. How can we overcome it? Give it as a woman. That is, how can women overcome that? And how can institutions that are already there, the male uh, big pins in politics, how can they also help us achieve? How can they help us create these spaces for women in politics? Okay, first of all, I, I honestly think that, first of all, this is, a, this is an awareness issue. Mm -hmm. uh, because uh, just like I mentioned of the rigid structures, you also mm -hmm. have a lot of patriarchy. Mm -hmm. And um, coming back to h how, you know, what drives our so societal uh, norms is that we are also very patriarchal. Mm -hmm. And of course, men have the most power, they hold most of the decisions. Mm -hmm. So um, I think we have to start from there. We have to start from the very root of this mm -hmm. by, um, of course, conducting awareness, mm -hmm. continuous awareness, not just uh, during the political season, but continuous campaigns that also educate, um, especially the people at the grassroots, that women indeed, mm -hmm. they can lead and, you know, they have capability and they can um, indeed, of course, um, drive our societies to mm -hmm. prosperity. Mm -hmm. So um, issue, issues start from the grassroots, um, the, the engagements, and then I think uh, the parties. Mm -hmm. And the government should also be, very, should also be a, a gatekeeper in this, in mm -hmm. that it should also drive the discussions, mm -hmm. in that mm -hmm. um, it is sort of rewards, just like I said before, providing incentives mm -hmm. uh, for the political parties that um, create more opportunities for women um, candidates on their list. Okay. I think that can be a good that can be a good start. Okay. Uh, yeah. I like it that uh, Anita has brought has brought in probably like what now even the men who are there can do. Now Wendy I want you to take this up and before I give uh, before you really comment on the same question Anita was responding to do you think women who are there do you think women who are leading this country right now have given you a better example or are proving to do something to bring in other women, are they the best role models or mentors? Do you think, yeah. would you say that? For me, uh, for me, I think uh, we can't generalize. Mm -hmm. We can't put all of them and say, we have poor women leaders mm -hmm. or we have the best. Mm -hmm. I think we have uh, both sides. Mm -hmm. If you talk about mentorship, it will be, it depends with which leaders, mm -hmm. what are they doing to ensure that they create spaces for mentorship. Okay. We have some who, are very, who have really come out to, to create those spaces and participate in uh, mentorship, uh, mentorship uh, programs. Mm -hmm. For us, for example, at Young Women Leaders Connect, when we started the webinar on women and politics, mm -hmm. we've been having women leaders that are coming on board every two weeks mm -hmm. on Wednesday. And that's just an example that they're willing to share the experiences, they're willing to, to show the way of, towards young women, how we're supposed to do that. So I can't say there's just one general um, uh, parameter that you can use to, uh, to gauge their, their strength. Mm -hmm. And also when you look at the past, the, the past info tracks, mm -hmm. the, first, uh, the analysis of the performance, you find we have women leaders who are in the top. Mm -hmm. We yeah. have uh, Honorable Gladys Swanga, among others, mm -hmm. who are in the top list. Mm -hmm. So this is just a, an indication that uh, we have those who are really doing well That's and they deserve to be uh, uh, recognized. Okay. But at the same time, I think we have also uh, instances where people feel that women leaders need to do more mm -hmm. and do better, especially uh, when things in the society happen. For example, when recently when the, the, yeah, the woman in at Pumwani, yeah. she gave birth just at the gate. Yeah. And then we come, we have the women leaders coming on board and speaking about it. But p 
uh, people feel that we need to put more energy mm -hmm. uh, when talk about maternal health. Mm -hmm. The same way we are giving the same energy when Mamangina was uh, was yeah was attacked <laughs> by Honorable Sudi. Yeah. Yeah. So I think uh, for us we, we need to to look at both and not look at uh, this is much weighty situation. Mm -hmm. This mm -hmm. is this is uh, a more important person in the country. Yeah. But we need the same vigor, the same energy that we are using mm -hmm. in a Mamangina situation. Yeah the same organi organizing as uh, strength and skills to come out as women leader. I think that's just, just a challenge that we need to, to uh, pop out and also challenge them to do better. Okay. Sure. Yeah. Maybe Patricia, to add on um, what Wendy is saying, mm -hmm. I would mm -hmm. probably add that uh, these women also cannot function in a vacuum. Yeah. yeah. We need to, young women or women who wish to be mentored should also come forward mm -hmm. yeah. because at the end of the day these women also have responsibilities yeah. mm -hmm. you also have to show the will to be mentored yeah. and yeah. to you know to be available for them to also reach out mm -hmm. yeah, because honestly if 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 for example no one showed up for help mm -hmm. how then where do you start from yeah, yeah. That's, that's very true yeah so, okay so yeah. now as we wind up as we prepare to leave and go home uh we have culture we have traditions we have uh the society that is our best teacher and the society says this the society says that how can we now um create a balance i would say create a balance how can we bring in the society to know that if a woman leaders are probably wanting to be elected today to lead this country we have many people like these are the terms most people say mimi si is young na mwanamke mimi si is ivutia mwanamke how do we bring those people with that mentality and tell them these women also have potential these women can serve you and these women can bring change wendy let me start with you Anita mentioned before, mm -hmm. there is need for more civic engagement, especially mm -hmm. at the grassroots, mm -hmm. because that's, the, that's where the problem comes and that's where the mm -hmm. problem starts. When mm -hmm. we start thinking of uh, what, what the society has been thinking traditionally, mm -hmm. uh -huh. and also we need to embrace that the world is changing. Yeah, true. The same 2020 we are in right now, mm -hmm. maybe 10 years, no, not even 10, mm -hmm. let me say in, in 90s, mm -hmm. 1990s, Things were different. Mm -hmm. uh, we had different uh, scenarios, different opportunities. Mm -hmm. We had different platforms for women. Mm -hmm. But now things are changing. The world is starting to embrace things. And mm -hmm. also culturalized. Yes. We have some cultures that are now backdated. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For us, uh, there's some cultures that we feel, right now we look at them as intimidating. Mm -hmm. Intimidation of women. Okay. But traditionally we used to see them as what need to be done and if you do that you're the the responsible the you now the, the best uh, picture of how a woman should be okay but i think times are changing and people need to embrace that and i think it's a challenge we need to start with the young people ourselves mm -hmm. or this is the generation we are living in mm -hmm. so for example if we need more advocacy and the young people to come on board in advocating for more women uh, participation in politics. Okay, uh, thank yes. you very much. I would like Anita for you to comment on uh, intimidation. How can women uh, deal with intimidation? Now, you are a young person or whatever age that you are, you're a woman who wants to lead uh, in a certain, in certain uh, positions in this country. A very short um, opinion or a very short advice. How can women watching us tonight, how can they deal with intimidation when that time comes for them to face people in political positions or well in the corporate sector and people are saying things that do not please them? How do I deal with it as a woman as we wind up? Well, first of all, I think Patricia, your head should be at the right place mm -hmm. uh, in that you, you of course, getting into the leadership space and of course, just like any other normal, be, normal human being, mm -hmm. um, we of course biased people. Mm -hmm. When we meet a person for the first time, we have opinions. Mm -hmm. We, uh, I mean, we. It's natural for us to to make a judgment mm -hmm. or even critique. Mm -hmm. So first of all, I think you should first of all get over that mm -hmm. and um, recognize that the fact that you're in a public space, mm -hmm. these things, um, you know, will, will keep on recurring. So it's more of, um, I don't know, building your internal strength and focusing for uh, on, on what is important um, in terms of your quest. 
Okay. Mm, that would be good. Okay. So thank you very much, ladies, for finding the time to join us tonight. And that brings us to the end of our conversation tonight. If you're watching us, I hope that as a young person, you have been inspired. And I'll leave you with this quote that says, the ability to learn is the most important quality a leader can have. Thank you very much. My name is Patricia Morioki. Do have yourselves a very good night.